Hi everyone, I'm Nora Krohn. I'm a violist in New York City, co-founder of the Till Project for String Players and a musician's vocal dystonia recovery advocate. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how the process I followed to recover from vocal dystonia works and why I use it to assist others. A little background on my story. I was diagnosed with musician's vocal dystonia in 2018, and in my own research on the condition, which was probably pretty similar to the process that brought you to this video, I learned that it seemed to exist somewhere at the intersection of maladaptive movement patterns, psychological and emotional distress, and genetics, which is kind of intriguing if you're not the one suffering from it. And very quickly, I came across a handful of musicians who had healed themselves, something I'd read was impossible. And while the mechanisms behind dystonia are still not clear, even to scientific experts, the one thing that these musicians had in common was that they'd used some form of intentional movement practice to change their brains and nervous systems. It took a little while, but eventually I found a guide and a violinist named Sophie Till who'd helped a colleague of mine with his dystonia, and she and I started working together. Over two years with Sophie, I learned a completely new approach to the instrument that's based on concrete physical logic, the same logic that we use every day when we brush our teeth, wash the dishes, or go for a walk. Now, if you're new to this channel or you have no idea what I mean by that, I will leave links to a couple of my previous videos down below with specific examples. But basically the gist is when we use movements in our playing that are really just refined applied versions of the same logical movements that we use in daily life, we stop straining ourselves physically and mentally, and the body and brain can do the jobs that they're designed to do, the way they're designed to do them, even in a scenario as complex as playing difficult instrumental music. When it comes to how this information is applied to dystonia recovery, the process is simple, although I speak from experience when I say it's probably radically different from any instrumental lesson we've received before. It starts with recovering the most fundamental aspects of our relationship to our body and the instrument standing or sitting posture, movement over the fulcrums of the feet, holding the instrument, holding the bow, and so on. We often use everyday objects or the opposite arm to stimulate a healthy and logical version of the movement that we want, and then we apply that healthy version to the instrument and or the affected arm. A very basic example just to illustrate this principle is that the left arm can have quite a lot of pollution in it just getting to the instrument maybe from the elbow pulling to the right, or from the shoulder lifting or the shoulder deadening. Uh, and if you want to try it for yourself, you can just throw your right arm up and see if it feels the same or different, and maybe quite different. Now, if it's the case that this movement has a lot of unhelpful junk baked into it, we might have a person throw their arm to an umbrella or a water bottle or a yoga mat on their shoulder or to the instrument on their opposite shoulder, and then apply that experience to getting the left arm to the instrument. And the change that this process produces in the body and brain is often remarkably fast. And best of all, because the brain and body recognize that movement as logical, the movement often stabilizes relatively quickly and we can trust that it's been integrated and then move on to the next step in the playing process. Here's another example. The basic bow stroke can likewise be polluted with confusion about the wrist leading or the shoulder relaxing or any one of a number of things. And in that case, we might have the student move objects across the surface of a table and just notice that no matter what the object is, we move it by moving the fingers, hand and forearm as a unit with the upper arm and shoulder following in proportion and synchronicity. So these are just a couple of examples, but in reality, there can be confusion from things as seemingly elementary as where the feet should be to how to play tenths. And the dystonia recovery process just proceeds gently and thoroughly from the general to the specific, using everyday objects and healthy movements to give the body and brain a logical, reliable, efficient way of engaging with the instrument and the music. There are four basic stages to this process learning the basic movements and applying them to the instrument, applying them to increasingly difficult repertoire, applying them in work environment, and finally ensuring that the technique is stable in stressful situations such as in performance. And it's important to understand that we do need to pass fully through all four of these stages in order to complete the recovery process. Now I want to acknowledge that there is still no consensus on the ultimate cause of dystonia, 
And it would be irresponsible of me to say that I know how this process works at the brain level. But what I can say is that research on neuroplasticity has broadly shown that the brain can be changed through intentional practice and that movement and visualization of movement are viable paths to inducing neuroplasticity. Further, when the movements themselves are logical to the brain and recognizable from daily life, it follows pretty intuitively that the brain will eventually come to prefer them to the alien neural pathways that we've created through years of well-intentioned but illogical and inefficient movement patterns. I do want to take a moment to speak to what I might call the nervous system side of dystonia. As I said before, the science on this is far from certain, but my friend and colleague Anna Tatari has done a lot of research on the emotional, psychological, some might say trauma-based somatic distress in relation to the instrument. And her research suggests that psychosocial factors do play a significant role in the development of the condition. What I want to emphasize in this video is that even in addition to whatever disturbing or traumatic experiences we may have had in our music education or our history with the instrument or in our lives in general, playing day in and day out with an approach that feels physically wrong, maybe even painful to our bodies, and that our brain recognizes as deeply illogical can only cause us distress, even when we've trained ourselves not to perceive it anymore. Add to that the inherent instability of a technique built on layers of dysfunction and the anxiety of hoping that dysfunctional technique will hold up under pressure or the stress of practicing incessantly to try and cement it into place. And we have a recipe for deep physical and mental distress on many levels. The approach we use to solving dystonia, in addition to addressing the movements themselves, also addresses this distress. First of all, by giving the brain and body a completely new way of engaging with the instrument that's inherently logical and familiar from daily life. The process also takes place seemingly separately from playing at first, through exercises that are simple and achievable, but that slowly build on one another to a full experience of playing, and more quickly than many people expect at the start. In this way, we remove the instrument from its old context as a special object with all of its associations with alien logic and injurious movement patterns, striving, forcing, and trauma, and we give it a different, sensible, safe, effective context. That new context is far enough away psychologically, physically, and neurologically from the one associated with the dystonic response that the brain and body gradually lose any interest in going down that path anymore. At least that was my experience and it has been for many others as well. So that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you're interested in knowing more about the approach or getting started, I invite you to get in touch through my website, www.noracrone.com. For more videos on dystonia recovery, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you wanna know more about the TIL approach to strings in general, which is a whole system of playing that goes far beyond solving injuries, you can subscribe to The Dill Project. Thanks everyone, see you next time.